Thank you very much, Anna, and thank you to the Toll Puddle Festival for inviting me to speak this evening. It's such a shame we can't get together for another year because it's one of the great things around this part of Dorset is the Toll Puddle Festival. We have the opportunity to come down to an area not known for its radicalism, but where the founding of the, the uh, English trade union movement as its as its origin story, I guess. And, it, and it's great to welcome people from all over the Southwest and the rest of Britain to, to our corner of the world. Um, and it's going to be such a sunny weekend as well. So it's a real shame. But um, with regard to um, protest, it's one of the questions I'm often asked is, can music change the world? Now, people generally want music to be able to change the world. It's kind of a bit of a sort of a leftover from the 1960s where a generation who had witnessed a cultural revolution where pop music had mixed uh, black and white culture and brought them together and produced something new in terms of rock and roll, they thought they might be able to create a political revolution as well. And that was possible because back in the 20, the tail end of the 20th century, music was the only medium available to young people. If you had something to say about the world, you didn't have Twitter, you didn't have Facebook, you couldn't make a film on your phone, you know, you couldn't go write a blog or anything like that. The only medium available was to learn to play an instrument, write songs, do gigs. So consequently, music, that vanguard role in youth culture, it had to take on board everything about being young. And an important part about being young is wanting the world to change, wanting the world to be better, wanting the world to be different from the way it's been before. So protest music was a big part of that. Uh, but unfortunately, um, <clears throat> the reality is that music is not really able to bring about social change because it, it has no fundamental agency. It doesn't in itself have the means by which to effect change. So so what does it do? It, the, the frustrating thing is we all know how music can change us as individuals. You know, you go, you put a, a song on, it can draw a mood out of you, it can make you lift you up and get you ready to go out on a Saturday night or you may be feeling melancholy and it can draw you in. You know, we, we're aware of the power of music, so we want it to have that ability to, to change the world. But it, unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that. But there is in music, all sorts of music, not just political music, there is a solidarity, an emotional solidarity. And that's, you know, expressed best. If you go to a gig and your favourite singer is singing your favourite song, a song you put so much emotion on, and you're the, the singer's singing it, you're singing it, and a thousand people around you are singing it as well, you feel part of something. You know, you feel you're not alone. And I think that is an absolutely key part of the role that music can play because the currency of music is empathy. When you write a song, you're trying to draw the listener to a situation they may not themselves experience and to draw their attention to that and to get them to feel some compassion for the person that the song is about, whether it's a political song, a love song, whatever. Or it works the other way around too, because you as a listener can draw some empathy from the song uh, if it seems to be a song that relates to your situation. And that's, that's, the, that's the real power of music. It has the power to make us feel that we're not alone. And that does have a political dimension. That has a real political dimension. Now, when I go out on, on tour, when I'm doing a show, and I've you know, come, to the, come to the end of the evening and I end on a song like There Is Power in a Union, and everybody in the audience is singing, they raise their fists, you know, that great expression of, of uh, union solidarity. I come off stage with my activism charged up, really charged up, you know, and my cynicism Banish, what a lucky old sod I am. Every night I go out on stage, I get dark with everybody and I get rid of my cynicism. It's, uh, God knows what I do without it. Uh, it's been tough these last 15 months. But um, that, that feeling that I get, that I understand that can happen, I, I'm trying to make the audience feel that as well. I'm trying to make them draw strength, not from what I'm saying and what I'm doing, but from everybody around them. And they're in their town, they're, they've got, you know, whatever's happening to them in their environment, I don't know, but, you know, they may be dealing with a lot of difficulties, um, racism, abuse, all sorts of stuff, but they see there's a room full of people who appear to be on their side and they draw some strength from that. They take away with them some, some power from that. My protest, my small protest in the song fires up the room 
And, and that, I think, is the role that music has to play in protest. It doesn't in itself change things, but it fires up the activism in the audience so that they go away and they do their bit. They do their bit. Also, music has a role in bringing people together in times of protest. You know, during the minor strike, um, music played a very important role because it allowed... Uh, a focus for solidarity in towns and cities around the UK that didn't have a pit so that you didn't only be able to raise money for the miners if you went to the coal fields, which were often, you know, in, mostly in the north and Scotland and in Wales, you could bring to your town everybody who was in solidarity with the miners, you could bring them out to express their, their solidarity, raise some money. So music has that very important role to play as well. But its role really is in, in, to, in supporting those people, as, as Marvin has said, who are involved in the electoral process and how music connects with that. Because it's all well and good writing protest songs, but if you're not at some point engaged with the actual process of democratic change, then, you, you know, you're really just singing about it. You've got to find a way to connect with, engage with uh, the people who are making practical change. And, it, and it's often not popular. To do that, you know, it can damage your career. It can um, have ramifications. Protest is never popular. You know, we're talking about the, the anti-protest bill going through Parliament now. This is just the, the latest manifestation of uh, a, a constant theme. Um, I read something just this last week um, from 1966, from a, a, a poll done in the United States of America in 1966. They, uh, October 1966, they asked... 1,250 white people, they asked the question, all in all, do you feel the demonstrations by African-Americans on civil rights, this is, you know, the March on Washington, Martin Luther King, uh, do you feel the demonstrations by African-Americans on civil rights have helped more or hurt more in the advancement of African-American rights? 85% of white Americans said they felt it hurt. You know, this is the same mentality of those people uh, booing the taking of the knee. They don't want to be troubled by the reality of life in a, in a racist society. They don't want to see that. And that's what protest has to do. It has to make people feel uncomfortable. It has to send a question out broader to the whole of society. So obviously music has a role to play in that. You know, you can engage in, in a, a, you know, a campaign with a song that, sends out a message, broadcast on the radio, broadcast through streaming. Music has that role there. But but don't kid yourself that it's the actual, um, the doing of the gig, the writing of the songs that is creating the change. You know, the whole process has to go all the way. Uh, as, as Marvin said, you know, it has to go all the way to electoral politics. And protest is part of that process. It's how we allow people who aren't politicians to engage in the process of change, protest. And music has a, a role in that by plugging plugging people together. Because it's my experience and my belief that if you can take that empathy that's in the audience, that's in music, and you can mix it with activism by bringing people to somewhere like the Toll Puddle Festival, then you can create solidarity. And I think that's the, that's the start of all social change. Music has a role to play in that. It's not a vanguard role. It doesn't have agency, but it but it does have a role to play. And that's why the Toll Puddle Martyrs Festival and other festivals like it around the country that are based on the politics of empathy and compassion and in engaging with people and activism is so, so important. And I really, really hope we can all get together there next year. And I'll bet it pees down with rain when we do.